Good morning, my name is uh, Alan G. Posted Jr. MD, and we are here at the St. Francis Eastside Hospital. We are preparing to perform a shoulder arthroscopy this morning. Uh, the patient this morning is a 45-year-old right-hand dominant female who has injured her shoulder uh, at work. Uh, as you can see, the patient has undergone a previous rotated cuff repair to the right shoulder uh, elsewhere. Um, uh, after surgery, she's developed a sore, painful, stiff right shoulder. Uh, and we, uh, which has not responded to uh, non-operative treatment, which has included medications, injections, and physical therapy. And this morning, we are going to manipulate her shoulder and perform an arthroscopy of her shoulder to try to alleviate some of her discomfort and, more importantly, to improve her motion and overall function. So we, we've performed our manipulation, uh, and now we've position, positioned the patient in what we call the lateral decubus position, basically on her side, to do the arthroscopic evaluation. And we're gonna mark our, we're gonna uh, identify our landmarks here. We're gonna identify our portal placement. So we've established two of our three portals. Uh, we've established the uh, posterior arthroscopic portal where the arthroscope is now, and the anterior working portal where the shaver is now. And we can see that we're in the glenohumeral joint. We have the humeral head here. We have the glenoid here, which is the socket. Directly in front of us is the uh, biceps tendon here. And that's an intra and extra articular structure. The biceps attaches to the superior labrum here. And it exits through the rotator interval into the bicipital groove here. And the biceps is a little erythematous, which is not uncommon in someone who has a frozen shoulder or what we call adhesive capsulitis. And you can see that we have a synovitis in the shoulder, which is not uncommon in someone who has a sore, a sore painful, stiff shoulder, uh, i.e. a frozen shoulder. So we're just going to clean some of this out. Now, this structure right here is what we call the subscapularis. That's the anterior uh, uh, rotator cuff structure. Again, the biceps tendon directly in front of us. And here's the posterior aspect of the rotator cuff here is the supraspinatus here and this attachment of the fibers here is what we call the anatomic footprint that's what the rotator cuff is supposed to look like as we as we move more posterior we see the infraspinatus and then ultimately way way back here is the teres minor so her undersurface of her rotator cuff looks good she's got a little bit of wear and tear on the humeral head here A lot of synovitis, erythema in the shoulder. So we're going to clean up her um, fraying of the labrum here a little bit with this motorized shaver, kind of clean out some of the um, capsulitis um, and some of the scar tissue. As you can see, the humeral head is moving pretty well in the axillary, what we, what we call the axillary recess. We're just going to get rid of a lot of this scar tissue which has been limiting her motion. Unfortunately, um, it just bleeds because it's very erythematous or red, hot, and angry. Okay. Now we're going to flip-flop portals because we like to see the shoulder in 360 degrees. We're going to go in through the anterior portal and look at the posterior structures a little bit better. And as you can see back here, it's red. Is that the shaver? And again, we're going to kind of just clean this out for her. As I said, a, a little uh, wear on the 
humeral head and glenoid. Back part of the cuff looks good. Just a lot of inflammation. So this is an electrocautery device which helps us control bleeding a little bit. Also helps us contour the shoulder a little bit. So we're just going to clean things up a little bit here. Watch your suction. So again, we've got good mobility. We've, we've cleaned up uh, the inside of the shoulder joint, or what we call the glenohumeral joint, and we've inspected the rotator cuff from below, and we don't see anything too bad. And we've eliminated all the adhesions. So now we're going to go on the top side and take a look at the rotator cuff in the uh, subacromial space. Okay, so now we're on the top side of the rotator cuff. And here's the superior part of the cuff. A lot of scar tissue from uh, just the adhesions and previous surgery. And we're going to trim some of these adhesions and scar tissue out with this motorized shaver. So rotator cuff is below us here with the, with the white and that looks pretty good. So here's the rotator cuff here. And above us is the acromion and the AC joint, which we're going to take a look at. AC stands for acromioclavicular. So we're going to clean some of the soft tissue up, try to control some of the bleeding. Because again, a sore, painful shoulder tends to bleed quite a bit. So we're going to take down some of the soft tissue. Taking down just more of the scar tissue. Shave it one more time. I'm going to identify the acromioclavicular joint in a moment. As soon as we get some of the stuff out of our way so we can see what we're doing. So if you watch here as I push, it's that, that uh, object that's moving there is the undersurface of the uh, acromioclavicular joint there. So here's the end of the arthritic acromion, um, excuse me, a clavicle, <coughs> excuse me, right here. So we're going to identify that and clean some of this junk out, which is just scar tissue. And so here's the end of the clavicle right here. So we're releasing a little bit more tissue. Buzzer. And now we're going to use a motorized burr to take down and clean out some of the bone because the shaver is just not able to achieve that. So we, we identify the edge of the acromion. What we want to do is get rid of uh, some of the spurring and smooth off the bone so we don't have any surfaces that will abrade the rotator cuff. So that's what I'm doing now. This is what we call an acromioplasty. We don't always do this, but they took, she's had previous surgery and they've, uh, they've done some of this before and just want to make sure that it's not going to interfere with her recovery, any sharp edges. 
that we might have here. So we've kind of smoothed out the front of the acromion. And we're getting rid of some more of her scar tissue all the way out lateral so we don't have any lateral impingement. Or irritation of the rotator cuff. We're going to clean some out, more of these adhesions out of the way. So she's completely free for her rotator cuff to glide. So now we've, we've cleaned out the entire undersurface of the chromium and there's nothing adherent. It's nice and flat. I'll take the burr back. And then we're going to smooth off her clavicle. We still have a little work to do up top. Now we're just identifying the AC joint and the end of the distal clavicle. So there's the end of the bone. And we've resected a portion of this before. And we're just going to, again, make sure this is not going to be a source of pain post up. We're just uh, cleaning up some of the soft tissue, trying to get control of the, um, what we call hemostasis, which is a fancy word for bleeding. Okay, so we've identified the entire clavicle, which is, and we're, we're a little bit upside down. So, this is the undersurface of the clavicle here. This is actually the top side, Burbeck. So, again, just finishing off the end of the clavicle. And the idea is we typically take about a centimeter off the end of the clavicle when, when we do that procedure. So, this part of the procedure does tend to bleed a little bit, so we... Um, because that's where the blood, the bone is where the blood comes from, so. There's the end of the clavicle, and that's nice and clean. We can see we have plenty of room here. We've cleaned off the undersurface of the acromion, and we still have some residual adhesions here, which we're going to uh, clean up with the shaver. All these bleed, as you can see. Now we're going to rotate the arm, and you can see we have no restriction in motion, plenty of room up top. And hopefully we'll be able to uh, maintain this motion in the post-operative period. So a frozen shoulder is a very painful condition because the shoulder is sore, painful, and stiff. Uh, as in this particular patient, oftentimes they've had previous surgery. It's typically associated in um, uh, of individuals who have diabetes. That's one of our big concerns. Uh, and her sugars are a little bit high. So the goal here is to uh, obtain motion, which we did today, and then more importantly, maintain the motion. So she will start very aggressive physical therapy this afternoon. Uh, we will push her motion to try to maintain the gains that we've achieved today. Um, uh, and generally, as we improve the motion, we relieve pain uh, and ultimately her function. And as you can see, we did that through a very minimally invasive procedure, um, uh, and she will start motion immediately.